Welcome to Streams of Income with self-help author Ryan Rieger. For the next hour, you'll hear proven methods for how to live the multiple income streams dream. Ryan is passionate about helping others discover their gifts and start their own business. He's published five books, and his courses and group coaching programs have changed the lives of thousands of students all over the world. Ryan's books include Private Label, The Easy Way, Finding Your Grace Place, and his latest, Streams of Income. And now, here's your host, Ryan Rieger. Hey guys, welcome back to the Streams of Income radio show. I'm your host, Ryan Rieger. Get my book, Streams of Income, for free at streamsofincomeradio.com. And this radio show is also a podcast. So if you're in your car, maybe you're out exercising and you're listening to this and can't uh, write down any of the links that we talk about or any of the resources that we talk about on this show, just go to streamsofincomeradio.com. This is episode number 23 now. Can't believe we're already 23 episodes into this. This journey has been so much fun for me. Uh, being on the radio, turning this into a podcast, getting this message of multiple streams of income out into the world. And uh, by the way, if you live in the Indiana area or anywhere in the Midwest, again, my Streams of Income live event is February the 1st. It's in Pendleton, Indiana. That's my hometown. So I'm excited to come back home, partner up with my friend Tyson Priest for an event on February the 1st. Uh, it's going to be streams of income live. So I'm going to go over the three main ways to make money online, just right out of my book give, and go much deeper. Um, Tyson's also going to be talking as well, but I just want to instill in you guys the opportunity, show you that this opportunity is real. There's people doing this. My students are doing this and you can live your dreams and create multiple streams of income. So just uh, excited about that. If you go to streamsofincome.com forward slash live, streamsofincome.com forward slash live, you can get more information about that event. It's February 1st in Pendleton, Indiana. That's 30 miles northeast of Indianapolis. Super excited to do that. I want to do more of these around the country. If you're listening to this and you are a pastor or you are willing to get some people together uh, and want to do a live event, want me to come to a live event, feel free to let me know. I'm all ears. I really feel like this is something I want to do more of. I want to get this message out. I want to see more people's lives change. Uh, this has been such a pleasure to see the success stories in my groups, and I want more success stories. I want you to be a success story. So if you have a, a, a group, you have a, a church, you have a um, you know, people that would love to hear this message. I am totally willing to talk to you about an opportunity to maybe come do a streams of income live event in your area. So my email is ryan at ryanrieger.com. Feel free to email me with, with questions about that or just get the conversation going. Would love to do it. So this episode is different again. So I have three unique guests on again, and they're going to be in uh, the second, the third, and the fourth episode. So we're chatting with Michelle Henderson, Travis Hettenbach, and Travis Welch. They're all Amazon sellers. So this episode is going to be dedicated to how to make money online, how to get started online, specifically with selling physical products. I love selling physical products because, and I love teaching it, because it's such an easy way to get started, guys. If you are listening to this and you have never done anything online, if you want to make an extra income online and or you want to make an extra income period and you've tried all different types of things and they haven't worked for you, you, you just, uh, just haven't stuck it out or for whatever reason, guys, physical product sales is a, is a, a method that anybody can do. You literally can get started with $0.00 zero experience. I've seen it happen over and over and over again. So it's such a unique business model that it, anybody can learn to do it. And just listening to these testimonials from Michelle and then my friends, Travis uh, Hettenbach and Travis Welch, you'll see guys, Michelle says, if, if she can do it, anybody can do it. And so that's why I love talking about selling physical products because here, you, here's exactly what you could do. If you're listening right now and you're thinking, gosh, I would love to do something like this to make extra money. You can get started right away. You literally could start by going to garage sales. I know people that are making really good income by going to estate sales, garage sales. They're buying things like VCRs 
or vinyl records or eight track tapes or cassette tapes or even books. They're buying these things for 25 cents, $5, $10 and selling them for 40, 50, 60, 70 and more. And guys, the opportunity exists. It's just, just right there. You just have to be willing to put in the work. And so as we, in this podcast episode, you're going to hear some different methods, how these people got started, the things they started uh, selling and how it's brought them to where they currently are now. So guys, let me break down some of the different ways people in my community, some of my students, how they're making money online. So we mentioned books. In fact, in episode 22, my buddy Carl Jacoby, uh, the one about the knucklehead, he, he himself called him, he called himself that. Um, and, uh, he got started with selling books. And it, so that's an easy way. You can find books at estate sales, garage sales, library book sales. There's tons of low hanging fruit at uh, sales like that. If you have absolutely no income, you have absolutely no money to get started, guys, this business is still possible. So we talk about consignment. Do you have a, a friend, a neighbor, a relative? Do you know anybody that has products that they have you know, been storing up that they've uh, maybe they've hoarded a little bit of, or they've done multiple garage sales and still have things sitting around that they'd love to just get rid of. Well, you could easily sell that for them. So here's what consignment looks like. Essentially, you would go to that person and say, I would be willing to sell these products for you online and we'll just split the profits. So you get free inventory, you do the legwork, the work of selling it online. Maybe you sell it on Amazon, eBay, Craigslist. There's also Facebook marketplace with local pickups. You could have stuff sit out right outside your porch. People come and bring money and put it under the mat. And you never even have to talk to them. Um, so there's so much opportunity there with that. You sell the products for your friend, your family member, your church friend, whatever, whoever it is, and you just split the profits with them. And that actually costs you no money, just costs you some of your time. So that's one we talk about. Of course, I've mentioned garage sales, the thrift stores, the state sales. You can get stuff really cheap, so the margins are really good there. We have people in our community, and we're when you listen to the the episode or the next few segments from Travis and Travis and Michelle, um, they all do retail arbitrage. So they're walking into stores like Walmart or Target or pretty much any brick and mortar store that sells physical goods. And they're finding items on regular retail shelves, the regular retail pricing uh, and able to flip them. And of course there's clearance sales that they can uh, find. And Michelle talks about this when she says the clearance to her is the gravy on top. So all three of these have built a foundation of products at these retail stores that they can sell over and over again. So all of them are walking in with essentially a shopping list of items that they need to buy. They are replenishing their inventory. So that's retail arbitrage. Then there's also online arbitrage. So let's say that you have no desire to travel around to different stores. Maybe you don't live close to any stores or you just don't wanna do that business model. We have people in our communities that are buying things online at all these dot-com places. They're being shipped to them and then they prep them and send them off to Amazon to be sold. Or you can actually have them shipped to a prep center. So we have intermediate prep centers that you can take advantage of. I have a, a friend that owns one in Illinois and you can actually send it to them. They will do all the prep work for you and ship it off to Amazon. So this could actually be a almost pretty seriously a no touch inventory type of business. So that's with online arbitrage. Then we have others that are doing things like private label and wholesale where they're having uh, ex exclusive arrangements like with wholesale companies and offering to sell their, their products online for them. With private label, you have the opportunity to build your own brand of a product. So we teach that in our private label, the easy way program. You can have your own brand of an item selling online. You control um, the pricing, you control all of it because it's your own brand. And there's so many advantages to that. So no matter where you are in this process, if you're just getting started and you have zero dollars to spend or you have lots of money to invest, there's an opportunity with physical products. Also, we're gonna mention it in these uh, segments, the Amazon Legends Group. This is a group that I started with my friend Danny Stock back in December of 2016. And now we've helped hundreds of students. Uh, it's a very small group, much more concentrated than some of the other groups that you might have been a part of or heard of. But we've helped so many students get started and grow their business. These three people that are you're gonna hear from in the, in the next few segments, 
uh, are all Amazon Legends members. One of them is one of our moderators, Travis uh, Hettenbach. And so they all attribute much of their success to this Amazon Legends group. Imagine a care group essentially or a support group for online sellers. That's what it is. Plus there's so many more perks. It's just an amazing community of people uh, that we've built up. Um, and it uh, it's just been such a blessing that so many people have been able to quit their jobs and, and live, live their dreams by selling physical products on Amazon. And this group has been such a help to them um, in that process. And if we're offering right now a free trial of legends, if you just go to amzlegends.com forward slash 14 days, you can get in on a 14 day free trial. So guys, I'm excited to introduce uh, our next uh, three folks on this uh, episode, uh, Michelle, Travis, and Travis. And uh, we'll be right back after this with Michelle Henderson. Hey guys, welcome back to the Streams of Income radio show. I'm your host, Ryan Rieger. And today we have Michelle Henderson, my friend. I've known Michelle for a few years now. She's one of our awesome Legends members. And uh, this episode, we're just talking with a few different people, learning their stories, how they got started, what they're doing online. Because guys, they're just real people. They're just putting the work in. They're doing what every single one of us could be doing. And uh, just Michelle, thanks for being on with me. Appreciate your time. Well, thank you for having me, Ryan. I really appreciate it. <laughs> um, tell me about your story. I know I know some of it, but our, my listeners don't. So where are you from and how, how long, how did you get started selling on online? Uh, I'm from Coleman, Alabama, uh, actually Hansville, Alabama. It's uh -huh. a smaller town. More people know Coleman than Hansville. Sure. Um, small town, Alabama. I started selling online in I started selling on eBay in April of 2014. Okay. And then a few months later, I added Etsy. Uh -huh. And then um, I think that summer, I started selling Merchant Fulfilled on Amazon. Mm -hmm. And then the next year, I, I had learned about um, FBA, which is fulfilled by Amazon, mm -hmm. and was kind of you know researching it, was kind of scared about it. And I discovered um, Jim Cockrum's group, My Silent Team, and decided to take the plunge yeah. and started selling FBA in the fall of 2015, right before, right at the beginning of Q4. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> sure. And then 2016 was my first full year of selling FBA and I did pretty well. Uh -huh. uh, and then January of 2017 came and when my family went through what I like to call financial Armageddon. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the next few months, I sort of sold out what was left in my inventory mm -hmm. and had to stop Amazon completely mm -hmm. because I couldn't afford inventory. Sure. I continued um, selling on eBay and Etsy what I had in the house. And then God led me back to Amazon mm -hmm. at the end of that year. Okay. And um, let's see. End of 2017? End of 2017. Okay. And I started trudging along. Uh -huh. uh, I would scrape up change to buy used books and yeah. I'm, I'm a, I'm a couponer. I've been doing that for, since 2002, uh -huh. anything I could get for, you know, pennies or for free yeah. with coupons and it was profitable. I would send it in. Mm. So I'm trudging along through 2018 at that point. And then in the fall of 2018 Q4, um, God sent an angel of mercy to me <laughs> and caught me in the Q4 group. Groups, yeah. And the things I started learning mm. changed things. And I was like, I've been doing this wrong. I need to start <laughs> doing it this way and this way and this way. <laughs> and then in the beginning of 2019, I, I took a leap of faith and I joined the Amazon Legends group. Yeah. And this past year, 2019 was just, it was just amazing. Mm. my family we we can pay bills now <laughs> we can buy groceries now mm. it, it's amazing i've i've been very blessed <laughs> so this is just this is your full-time thing then yes That's i have awesome. um wow. i have several health conditions i can't yeah. work a real job sure. so this is a blessing i can work when i'm able and my mother helps me i i pay her she does the prepping and the shipping and awesome. occasionally some sourcing so um yeah. <laughs> That's so cool. So give me an idea of what you were doing in sales. Do you, do you remember? I know I didn't ask you this before. Do you remember what your sales were like in 2018 when you're kind of just fledgling along? Uh, I, well, for the entire year of 2018, 
I did less than nine thousand dollars. Okay. Uh huh. Um. In and what was twenty nineteen like? For well, I I hit my first ten thousand dollars in set gross sales in July of wow. 2019 so in july of 2019 then, you hit ten thousand dollars of sales which was more than all of 2018 right right so awesome and um and then for the entire 2019 my gross sales were ninety one thousand dollars. that's awesome oh my gosh congratulations oh, thank you <laughs> wow so tell me okay so you um for those of people who are just getting started or learning or thinking about man that would be great to do that you said you were doing couponing and then you were also buying scraping up change and buying used books that's how i got back into it okay and then um when i joined the q4 group and uh -huh. then legends expanded more on that i started doing uh what's called replans yep. replenishable products things that uh -huh. you can sell over and over and over and uh looking them up using a method called reverse sourcing mm -hmm. where instead of just scanning the upc you type it in like you're a customer looking for that yeah. product and that changed everything mm. that and knowing my numbers knowing okay this is not enough profit i'm not buying this i'm gonna buy some you know save my money and buy something that has more profit all of that just changed everything mm. i love it yeah so guys she's talking about replens and, and i think it's episode number three or four i speak talk with jimmy smith about this very strategy in the lap, last episode, number 22, I believe. We talked to Carl Jacoby uh, and we talked about replens there. These are items that are just on the regular retail shelves. So Michelle's not um, reliant on clearance inventory. She's finding things that are on the regular retail prices that she's able to then essentially make profit on that, even though it's, it's at regular retail because people will buy it uh, for more for that convenience or for whatever reason, but people do. Um, and people like Michelle are able to uh, make a living from items that sell over and over again. So Michelle, that's so cool. So you learned a lot in, so the Legends Group helped you out a ton. You went oh, from yes. 9,000 to 91,000? Yes, changed my life. <laughs> That is so, and you're able to help your mom too, and yes. her to work with you. Yeah, we all live together. My mother, my adult son, and I, we, and the Chihuahua, uh -huh. we all share a house. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Chihuahua runs the house. Yeah. <laughs> His name is Cisco. <laughs> yeah. He runs a house just like my two year old runs our house. Oh, yeah. Totally understand that. That is so cool. And so, your mom, you said your mom helps you with the prep and ship and also some of the sourcing? Mm hmm. Awesome. Yeah, she's good at the, the shipping. She can do the Jenga thing really well. <laughs> right, putting the stuff in the boxes. Mm -hmm. So what's, what's separate, guys, about this method or what's so unique is that she essentially, instead of like going around and looking for clearance all the time, Michelle's walking into a store with the shopping list. She knows, exactly. I need more of this product here. I need more of that. And it's, uh, I'm, I'm sure you still look for clearance. Is that right, though? You still kind of oh, go yes. over there and- But and, clearance is gravy. Absolutely. I learned clearance that. Clearance gravy is gravy on the top, yep. So she's walking in with a shopping list. She knows what she's looking for. That's something that she could easily give the list to her mom or a different shopper. And then she can be focused on other things that she wants to work on, whether that's increasing her business or hanging out with her chihuahua or her son. You know, it's, it's that business, this business allows that. That's so cool. What advice would you give somebody? Okay, I guess let's say this, you back in 2014, what would you tell that Michelle? I would tell that Michelle, know your numbers. Mm. That is the most important thing. Know, you know, what your profit margin is, what your mm -hmm. ROI return on investment is. Mm -hmm. Make sure you're going to make a profit on the thing that you're buying and right. make sure it's going to sell fairly quickly and not sit there for months because mm -hmm. you're going to rack up long-term storage fees <laughs> <laughs> right. and then you're not going to have any profit. <laughs> right. It eats into your profit and kills your and business. If I had known about replans and reverse sourcing back then, oh, mm -hmm. wow. Mm. So, and yeah. uh, the most important thing is just don't give up. Yes. Just keep going. If I can do this, anybody can do this mm. because mm. there are days where I, you know, I'm not going to be able to pick my head up that much, but mm. you know, there are times I, I'm, I'm okay. So right. anybody can do this business, you know, no yes. excuses. No excuses. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> 
I love that. And guys, there are so many people that are like Michelle that I know that are doing this that have health issues. And it, like you said, it's, it, you, you just have to have a no excuse approach. If anybody wants to give Michelle and I an excuse, we can probably find somebody in our community that has overcome that or has overcome that very same one. So, and you're able to do this all from your home and it, all, so you bring the stuff back to your house and then your mom yes. preps it for you. Okay. Yes. Love it. And you're mostly doing retail arbitrage, no online arbitrage. I do about 85% RA and okay. 15% OA. Okay. Um, it, I, I just, I do better with RA right now. Sure. I'm trying to do more OA, but it, yeah. I just love doing RA. <laughs> yeah. And online arbitrage is, is if, she could if you wanted to that she'd have items that she's buying online and shipping them uh, to her home to be prepped or she could actually ship them to a prep center where somebody actually preps them for it so some of those things could be completely uh items that she never even touches uh, that somebody else uh, does for her but uh the typically the margins are a little bit better with retail arbitrage and she probably you enjoy getting out and shopping yes <laughs> I do. It's addictive. Right. It is. It's fun to find those deals. <laughs> yes. When you find something and go, that's got a 200% ROI. That's going I in the know. car. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. What would you tell the new person? To, so I, obviously you said you would uh, tell your yourself to know your numbers. What about the, we got 40 seconds left. That person who's thinking about doing this, what's your advice for them? Just try it. I know you're probably afraid. Do it afraid. Mm. Do it anyway. There's lots of things I still do that terrify me. And I just have to keep telling myself, do it afraid. Just do it anyway. That's right. <laughs> you know, just try it. You're not going to know unless you try. Oh, so true. That's good advice, guys. Do it afraid. There's going to be things that you don't want to do or you're scared to do. You just jump through it and usually ends up not even being nearly as scary as you thought it was going to be or you you're, you made it in your mind out to be. So, Michelle, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for doing this with me. Such a pleasure. And we'll, well, we'll talk more soon. Mine. Thank you, Ryan. Hey, guys, welcome back to the Streams of Income radio show. I'm your host, Ryan Rieger. Grab a free copy of my book, Streams of Income, at streamsofincomeradio.com. And also, this uh, show is a podcast. All the episodes are there. You can listen to every single one of them on demand. All the show notes, every single uh, link that we talk about right there on streamsofincomeradio.com. So this segment, I'm chatting with my good friend, Travis Hettenbach. He is one of my leaders in the Legends Group, is enormously valuable. Uh, to that group has been a huge help and just helped a lot of people figure out their business. Travis, thanks for being on with me, man. Yeah, definitely. I appreciate it. That's good. Appreciate, appreciate you doing this. Tell me your story. I know, I, I know a lot about what you've done, and but uh, tell me about your story. Tell my listeners how, how you got started selling online and all that. Yeah, well, I'll try to give you the cliff notes. Um, it actually started way back when I was probably a toddler. Um, really? <laughs> now my, uh, <clears throat> way, before, way before Amazon was even a thing. <laughs> no, my, uh, my folks have actually owned a retail shop for uh, my entire life. Actually, it started shortly before I was born. So my first, um, my first memories of, of selling, if you will, are actually in that, in that store. So uh -huh. uh, we, won't, we won't go into those stories. But basically, that's kind of where I first started to learn, uh, you know, the art of retail and, and selling yeah. people, sort of thing. But um, I took a sidetrack and I worked at a corporate job for quite a while. I was into computers, and so I did the computer science thing. Uh -huh. uh, for a, a very large uh, privately owned corporation for quite a while until they got tired of me and uh, they escorted me out the door. Oh no! At that point, I needed to figure out what I should do. So um, I always knew that I was going to be an entrepreneur of some sort. I always knew I'd own a business. I just didn't know what it was because of that upbringing with my folks, um, uh -huh. my dad and mom, and both, you know, all that stuff. So eventually, I settled on a, a franchise that sold LED lighting. Okay. Uh, so I did that for a few years, and that ironically. Um, is kind of what got me started on to Amazon. So after I'd done that for several years, things weren't great. Uh, that business was not flourishing as well as I had hoped it would. Mm -hmm. So um, Amazon kind of started off as a as a side income, an, another another stream of income, if you will. Mm -hmm. um, so I I actually the reason I even thought about it was um, at my current office there was a guy actually just right out my my back window across the street. He uh, had a garage sale. Okay. So I stumbled over there one day and was just chatting with him. And he said he had just quit his full-time job to sell full-time on eBay. I'm like, what? Are you well, serious? Is that possible? <laughs> like, Wait a minute. What, why eBay? You know, because I, obviously I've been online and I'm a, I'm a tech nerd, you know, whatever for a long time. Yeah. I just didn't know that eBay was still that much of a, of a platform. I knew, okay. I knew it had been around for quite a while and I'd sold sure. everything. But 
Um, so anyway, I, you know, that led me to do some Googling and whatnot. And uh, ironically, in terms of all that Googling, you know how the ads work. I think I got an ad for one of Jim Cochran's deals. Okay. Um, and so at some point I joined, uh, joined, I must have joined Silent Sales Machine or one of those Facebook groups or something. Uh-huh. Um, in the process of doing all of that, though, I figured out that I could sell some of my old LED stuff on Amazon. So oh, I, nice. Yeah. I loaded up a few things. I did it all merchant fulfilled. You know, I didn't know anything about FBA. Mm -hmm. uh, but as I finally realized some of this stuff was selling, it kind of got the wheels turning and said, well, you know, I have access to, to manufacturers through my LED suppliers and whatnot. So yes. it kind of got me thinking about those types of things, kind of got me thinking about that. And uh, eventually I stumbled on to, uh, I believe it was probably one of the early RA, the easy way uh -huh. webinars that I did with Danny. Yeah. <clears throat> and eventually that's what landed me in Legends. Um, so, uh, you know, the, kind of the rest from there is history. So that that's kind of the origin story of me getting started on Amazon. It wasn't too long after that, that I, uh, that I realized that, you know, Black Friday was coming up. It was just, yeah. I kind of started. So that was my first Black Friday. So I bought a bunch of stuff, you know, that first Black Friday and that's kind of what, how long ago was that? You know, I, I'm trying to remember what year that was. I, I kind of lose track of the years now. I think, sure. I think this Q4 that we just went through, I want to say that was my, it was either my third or my fourth Black okay. Friday. Now I can't, okay. I can't remember. This is 2020, right? I, now, right, it's I mean, crazy, isn't it? Gosh, I'm just hard to keep track of. But you've uh, been selling for at least three years, then yeah, maybe about, four. About three years, I think. Full time, I've been doing a little over two years. So okay, um, you know, I was still kind of treating it like a side hustle for a little bit. Sure, just another another source of income. And uh -huh. eventually, I realized that it was outpacing my LED business. Um, you know, very yeah. Quickly. So uh, kind of switched. I actually believe it or not, the LED stuff is now a, a side. That's awesome. Okay. I want to hang out there for a second. Cause, um, I remember you telling me about the led stuff that is, I would call that when you started, that would have been your low hanging fruit. Uh, you, it's something that you had right in front of you that you were already doing. And so guys think about what is already uh, right underneath your nose. Like you may, maybe you work for a company that makes physical products. Maybe you know a friend that works for a company that is a salesman or ha works for a wholesale company. Just think about who in your network has physical products that they deal with, that they sell, that they make. Uh, when you're driving around your town, what factories do you pass by? What buildings do you pass by, especially in industrial areas? Are there relationships that could be built there? And maybe you you sell on Amazon for that company and, and you represent their products. There's, that's a whole other webinar or a whole other uh, right. episode. Travis, you and I could chat about that. But so the LED stuff was your low hanging fruit. You started selling that. And then now that's become just your side thing. That's cool. Right. Right. Yeah. I still get occasional uh, requests. I've got a couple of electricians that look out for, for products okay. and stuff. So we still get a few things here and there, but I, I really don't actively pursue that business anymore. It's mostly just referrals and sure and side projects. Yeah. Those. So what's your business look like right now, as far as um, just the type of inventory you're selling, the, the method of inventory, all that? I'm still mostly uh, retail arbitrage. Almost uh -huh. all, almost all of it's RA. I do, I do more OA now than I have for, before. Okay. It's still not very much. So um, in terms of just the types of products, man, literally, literally everything. Yeah. You know, and if somebody, every, every once in a while, somebody will ask me the same question. I'm like, man, it's, it's everything. Everything you can think of is from every corner of the store. Anything that's profitable, uh, really, anything right? Anything that's profitable. And I, and I, I have fairly loose um, criteria for me. You know, I, the way I look at it is if I see a dollar or two sitting on the shelf, why would I leave it there? Right. Um, so, you know, I, I, granted, I, you know, I don't do something that's not profitable. So I, sure. for, for me, now that I've got a team that does my prep and ship and that kind of stuff, I've got to factor that in there. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I still, I look at it from, as an opportunity. If I see something there that looks like I can make money on it, you know, I'm going to pick it up and I'm going to roll with it. So, yeah. Um, yeah. So now, now I'm at that point where I'm working on scaling because I'm still the bottleneck. And I, you know, as you know, any other sure. business owner knows, you typically are the bottleneck because you're, you're yourself. So I'm working on getting that taken care of so I can scale up bigger and bigger and, and work on other streams. Yeah. Do you have, so have a shopper maybe that's going to shop for you or? Trying to get to that point. I'm still the primary shopper. So yeah. um, that's yeah. probably the next real step because I've got enough of a team that can do the, the prepping and shipping now. Awesome. Um, I, I'm, I'm, that's, that's the next step. 
now that it's 2020 and we're past Q4, that's, that's the next logical step is to find somebody. That's that can awesome. Work. Guys, he mentioned RAOA, retail arbitrage. He, he'll go into a store like Walmart, for example, find stuff that's on, uh, and imagine you're doing a lot of replens, right? Things are selling over and over again. So guys, these are things as we mentioned when I were chatting with Michelle and the other episode or other segment, these are items that sell over and over again. And the aren't normally aren't on the clearance aisle. These are regular retail priced items that Travis, Michelle, and all the other students that we have are buying at regular retail prices and still able to make a profit on it. And they also mentioned OA, which is online arbitrage, doing the exact same thing, but buying it online just you know, on a regular website and you then prep it and ship it to Amazon or have it sent to a prep center and you never have to touch it. Super cool. Trevor, so what would you tell um, a person who's just, just getting started or thinking about moving, you know, wants to be like you in a few years? What, what advice would you have them give for them right now? Yeah, I, you know, I think you kind of mentioned it earlier. You know, you need to start off with something that you're familiar with. Start off with your low-hanging fruit. If you've got stuff laying around, and I know everybody says that, but like I said, for me, it was the fact that I had some of those LED products still sitting around, mm -hmm. and that's where it started. But you know, even if it's not something that you currently have, um, I know a lot of people, I get a lot of people to ask me, hey, can you sell this for me? Sure. And I, and I tend to shy away from that, not because I don't want to help them, but it, sometimes it's kind of hard for them to understand that, you know, Amazon and eBay, although they both are, they're both e-commerce and they're similar, there's some differences there. And I, so I typically yeah. tell them, well, those items are probably more suited for eBay. The stuff that I tend to sell on Amazon is not used stuff, right? It's not stuff yeah. that's outside of their boxes. So right. having said that, you know, as you're, as you're getting started, just look, when you're looking, when you're shopping for your groceries, mm -hmm. um, you know, look at the stuff there and, and take a peek at it. You know, I know with, with uh, legends, we often talk about reverse sourcing. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm not a big fan of scanning every single item. You can, sure. you can start that way. Sure. Um, but I don't, I don't think you're going to find a whole lot that way at first. Um, mm -hmm. For me now, I think the most, uh, the most productive way that I find my replens is actually not standing in the aisles and looking at stuff. Mm -hmm. I like to take pictures of stuff. So I, I get my mm -hmm. phone out and I'm like, okay, I'm going to take pictures of all these items. Uh -huh. and I, Cause I, that's faster for me to take the pictures while I'm standing in the store, continue my regular shopping. Cause I'm also at the same, same time shopping for all my replens. Yeah. Then go back to my desk where I can kind of more efficiently search for stuff. Oh yeah. Like, then you're not there. standing in the aisle. That's brilliant. Right, right. Because I, I'm not, you know, I know uh, there's other people in our groups and I know you probably talked about Jimmy and Brittany and whatnot, and they like sure. to stand on the aisles and go down the aisles. And that's great. Um, you know, I'm, I just, I don't like doing that. I don't like standing yeah. in the aisle for hours and hours. My, <laughs> at, at, at some point, my brain just says, Enough. You, gotta, you know, the, <laughs> I, the, the music that they play and the story, right. sometimes that's just like, okay, I, I got to go somewhere else because it's just driving me crazy. But oh my gosh! For me, it, it is more effective for me to go sit down at my desk. Um, yeah. I've got you know I've got a bigger screen. I can have multiple tabs open. And you I, can I, focus I on it. Focus. Yeah, good yeah. stuff. All right, so, Travis, I, thank I, you I, so I, much for doing this. This is awesome. Yeah. Just got a couple seconds left. Appreciate your your time today. Thanks for all that you do in the Legends Group, guys. And if you're interested in uh, in Legends, just go to amzlegends.com forward slash fourteen days. Thanks again, Travis. Appreciate it. Sounds great. See you. Hey guys, welcome back to the Streams of Income radio show. I'm your host, Ryan Rieger. And this segment, I'm chatting with my good friend, Travis Welch. And we met through an auction. I might have uh, Travis talk about that. So Travis, thank you so much for being on with me. Really appreciate your time today. No, thank you, Ryan. Yeah, it's awesome. Um, so you are, uh, you've been selling how long? I've been uh, late 2016. Okay. I started... Uh, Right at Q4 time, didn't know what Q4 was at that time. <laughs> right. I was, quarter four, uh, by the way, guys. The last, the last quarter of the year where Christmas is, which is usually the biggest sales uh, figures of the year for Amazon sellers. Right. Um, and I, I got started really slow just to see it was in work. I was kind of skeptical first uh -huh. time with online sales. So um, I started really slow. And then uh, as 2017, mm -hmm. uh, got following Jim Cockrum as silent team mm -hmm. and saw a, a post from you um, mm -hmm. on the auction. And I don't know, it was, uh, it was a lot of money at that time. Uh, it was. And, and I, I was, I don't know. I was bidding and I, I mm -hmm. bid one more time saying, mm -hmm. well, <laughs> if I don't get it, I'm going to stop. And, and I, li I lied to myself because I bid uh, one more time <laughs> after that. And uh, actually, end up winning uh, 
the auction. Um, yeah. It was uh, very good. Uh, um, we had a, it was a good purpose for the uh-huh. money and uh, really enjoyed helping that out. I've learned a lot. I met yeah. a lot of people because of that auction mm. and uh, it, it's really helped me out. Um, actually, um, I was invited to, to Texas to um, go to your uh, yeah, that private label uh, event, right? Private label event and yeah. uh, really enjoy that and learned and met some people there. Uh-huh. And that was, uh, that was when I first heard about the legends group. Okay. Um, learned about that. And it, at that time it was just a little bit pricey for what I um, sure. was uh, selling. And uh, I guess 2017 at the end of that, I started uh, up in legends. I think it was December 20th, somewhere around there uh-huh. and right after Q4 mm-hmm. and had been there ever since. And I've uh, learned tons. There's a, mm-hmm. a huge supportive community. Mm-hmm. Um, there's uh, a lot of uh, people I've met, uh, great relationships that have, have uh, formed out of that mm-hmm. and, and really learned a lot to, to help grow the business uh, on Amazon. Love it. And, so you mentioned a lot of stuff. The auction real quick was an auction that I hosted on eBay for my brother and sister, sister-in-law's orphanage in Antigua, Guatemala, and it included things like some of the courses. It included a, a, a coaching call with me. Uh, Travis won that and then uh, just you know, started up a, a friendship because of that and turned into uh, some other things for him. He also mentioned the Legends Group. You guys can get a, a free 14-day trial of that, amzlegends.com forward slash 14 days. So Travis, tell me about your business, what it looks like now. What, what type of stuff are you selling? Because a lot of people want to know, like, well, what do you sell on Amazon? Okay, well, I am I'm a big grocery person. I do a lot of grocery and then health uh-huh. and household products. Okay. I started selling toys. Uh, I think that's the, it was the easiest way during Q4 and uh, I sold uh, a lot of toys and then kind of migrated from that to doing reverse sourcing and, mm-hmm. and learning how to find multi-packs and, and different unique um, bundles mm-hmm. and went through uh, that and for, I just like food and helping household uh, items. <laughs> Um, I like food too. <laughs> uh, the, the only downside of that is uh, you got to watch expiration dates, but right. most of the time, um, I, or I haven't had a problem with those uh, um, yet. So, mm-hmm. yeah. So, so are these things that, so a lot of people think that you have to, that you can only buy items in the clearance aisle. I would imagine that you're, you're finding stuff that are, that's regular retail pricing. Mm-hmm, yes. Um, the regular retail price are going uh, on things whenever you do the research. Uh-huh. And then if there is a sale, then that's a uh, kind of bonus. Right. Yeah. So now yeah. these are things that are, you can sell over and over again that we call replans. Mm-hmm. Yep. They're replans and you can uh, just sell once you find the product and then you can just go through and get a grocery list and, and go through and source or have somebody else source it. And right mm-hmm. now I'm doing all the sourcing. Um, mm-hmm. There's uh, I, like Walmart because you can do a lot of online there. And then the grocery you can do online and then pull up and they'll even load it in your car. That's awesome. Oh my gosh. So right before we started uh, recording this, I'm not going to tell, tell you what your product is, but you mentioned a product that you can get at a pharmacy and you, you get them for $2 to $2 and 50 cents a piece. You mm-hmm. put them in a bundle of three or a multi-pack of three yep. and you sell them for around $21, $22. That's right. Yes, that's right. Guys, and these are items that you could go to any, and this pharmacy is one that is all over the country. Uh, it might even be all over the world. And it's, uh, it's, these are items that you walk into, into this particular pharmacy and find anytime. Mm-hmm. And he just puts them in a multi-pack and, and basically you double your money with those types of margins. If you're talking about on Amazon, there's fees and all that. So something that sells for around $7 um, that you buy for seven or so and sell it for 21 with Amazon fees, you're going to make about seven, an extra seven to eight dollars, uh, depending on you know all the Amazon fees. But mm-hmm. you double your money on something that you can find at a pharmacy. Yep, and not on sale. And, and not on sale. That's huge. Right. Yes. Yeah. And then sometimes you do get coupons, and it even makes you know makes it more profitable for you. I was I was in there this week, and uh, they had buy one get one fifty percent off. So that oh my was, gosh. <laughs> yeah. Added bonus there. That is so cool. So I know a lot of Travis, a lot of people think that, man, well, that's great for you. You've been doing this for a while. Um, you know, 
Is that even, is it possible for me? What advice would you give a person who's thinking about doing this or has maybe a mental block of thinking that it's only six, it's only going to work for people like you, Travis, who have been around for a while and have just, you know, have a lot of experience. Right. Well, and I started uh, really, really small learning. Um, mm -hmm. I did a lot of uh, research and um, to try to figure out how to do it. And then I got stuck. I'll be honest with you. I got stuck at the beginning. Not mm -hmm. one to set up an Amazon account. And <laughs> um, no, that was, it was uh, too much uh, trouble. Sure. I didn't know how to do it. I was scared. Uh -huh. um, and then I went and went and took the Amazon seller app and went to TJ Maxx. And the, the first mm -hmm. item I had sent in was a, a smart light bulb. Okay. And that changes <laughs> colors. Yeah. And that was the first item that I had sold. So do you remember what that, what, what that sold for and how much you bought it for? No, I don't <laughs> uh, recall. Um, but Still it was, that first uh, sale, it's huge. That first sale, it, it, you, everybody remembers that first item that they, yeah. that they sold. And then remembering that it worked. Yeah. So that's uh, so I would spend uh, my lunchtime. Uh -huh. uh, I would uh, go in local stores around uh, where I work and mm -hmm. would spend uh, 30 to 45 minutes in there going through and just doing research and trying to find products. Now, mm. I'll be honest, at the beginning, I was doing a lot of scanning. I would scan barcodes, I would scan, sure. and I, I wouldn't find a, a lot of things um, mm -hmm. that are profitable. Uh, there was a few things, and I would have to venture over to the clearance and mm -hmm. to find a, a lot of different things. Mm -hmm. But as I branched out, then I learned uh, different techniques, and, and then that, as you do it, you're going to learn what works and what didn't work and where to, mm -hmm. to go and look and find. So you have yeah. to put a little bit of time into it to, to learn and educate yourself. Yeah, that's cool. One thing we talked about too, that I think is unique to this business, uh, maybe not completely unique, but one I see a lot is that this is a family thing for you. This is not just you off on your own, taking away time from your wife and your kids to go do this. You involve your whole family. In fact, you have an RV and you travel around and you go to conferences in the RV. Right. Talk about did. how this has become, we have a couple minutes left. How has this become a family business uh, with you guys? Okay, the, the family portion of it is when we go and get items that we source, we'll take a, a little road trip uh -huh. together and uh, have a, a good shopping in Louisville, which is about 30 minutes away. Or, okay. Uh, so we'll go and, and spend the day uh, going around there. And then we would uh, make a, a lunch date or dinner date of it. And we'll all sit down and, and have it. Uh, they, uh, they enjoy it. They're learning. Uh, yeah. They help me out. They help me do some packing um, and labeling. And they mm -hmm. are uh, learning that. And in the RV, um, eventually, we plan on taking the RV around the U.S. Mm -hmm. and uh, homeschooling and going around and venturing out and seeing the United States in RV. And getting paid for it. And getting paid for Guys, it. Guys, this is what's so huge. If you have a desire, there's so many people that I know that are now doing this that are, they take retail arbitrage vacations. So, mm -hmm. of course, Travis can stay around his home area and source there. But a lot of the same stores he shops at in his hometown are down here in Texas. So he could right. drive his family down here, hang out with me and my family and go continue to do his work and get paid while they're on the road and then hitch a ride and go back, you know, Hey, let's go over to Albuquerque, New Mexico. Now we've never been there. Let's, they have a really cool dinosaur exhibit. You can do that with this business guys. It's so cool. Travis, yeah. thank you so much for, for sharing this, for your You're wisdom, welcome. for your friendship, everything that you've done and uh, just appreciate it. No, thank you, Ryan. Guys, if you, again, if you want to do what Travis is doing, uh, feel free to grab a free trial of Legends. It's amzlegends.com forward slash 14 days, one, four days. Guys, we'll see you in the next episode. You've been listening to Streams of Income with self-help author Ryan Rieger. From right here in the Dallas Metroplex, Ryan teaches several entrepreneurial courses and group coaching programs to students all over the world. Be sure to listen next week at the same time for Streams of Income with Ryan Rieger.